Here you're about to see Todd Spiel from Wretched Radio make a very interesting case for God from a mathematical and scientific perspective. He has a student here, very respectful, gives some very thought-provoking responses. I'm going to let the video play out, but stick around for the end if you want to hear some of my thoughts about this video. Get into it. I'm really simple. So as an engineer, a numbers guy, tell me, why do math equations always come up with a consistent answer? Because they're always constant in this universe. There are, they, that's right, there's constants. But how, what makes them constant? Uh, laws of physics and math. Laws of physics, all right. But who wrote those laws? Well, uh, man did. We think that we identified the correct formula. We experimented enough times and we concluded that's the law. Fair enough, but that still doesn't tell me why we have consistent outcomes. Here's my premise, that if there is not a bigger constant in the universe, there's no constants in math or in science. Because if we are random, nothing, you know, we kind of came together over billions of years and sort of got our act together and became moral, started walking upright, developed eyes, nose, ears, mouth, taste, all of that, we kind of evolved that way. There, 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 there wouldn't be any constants. We would never have anything that was certain because it's all random according to evolution. Fair enough? Fair enough. Do you believe in evolution? I believe in microevolution. Microevolution. What's the difference between micro and macro? Macro is that we are our descendants essentially from fish, and we actually grew uh, the fish grew legs. Then we evolved into humans. Okay. Microevolution is that depending on where we lived, such as uh, different climates, we adapted, we changed mm -hmm. because uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago, we did not know how to actually process meat. Therefore, our digestive system was different. Our teeth were actually different. But as we learned to actually cook our meat and evolve and adapt, our very teeth changed, our digestive system changed because we did not need that powerful bacteria anymore. And why did we decide to do all of those things? And what was the mechanism that kicked that process and guided that process so we could grow teeth, have a digestive system, develop something called peristalsis, which is what moves the food down to your gut, mm. the acid to deteriorate it, the ability to pull out the vitamins that you need, plus process it through a plumbing system. Mm -hmm. when, when did all of those things take place? And who decided that's the way we should be? Well, somewhere along the line, the coding in our DNA changed. The code in our DNA changed. All right. Codes in DNA um, can be manipulated these days and changed. Mm -hmm and dip, different people have DNA, but no new information gets added to DNA. You can detract information, but you can't add information to DNA. See, what I'm trying to get at is, there, it's a little suspicious that all of these things happened all by themselves without anything to guide them or to think them through. Okay, so for instance, let's say you had your teeth, mm -hmm. you had your throat, you've evolved all of that, you've got peristalsis working its way down, but you haven't evolved your stomach yet. What would happen to your teeth and to your throat? I, I, would, not, I would not know. They'd, they'd go away because you don't need them for anything. You had to happen all at the same time. It's called irreducible complexity. You're so complex that if we, we reduced a component of it, none of the other components would exist because they need each other to function. All right, I want to ask you a question about DNA. Okay. How many cells do you have in your body? Too, uh, too many to count. About 50 million, yeah. give or take, yes. 50 million cells. How many strands of DNA do you have? Uh, that I do not know. Let me put it to you this way. If we took out your DNA, first of all, we could fit it into a tablespoon, mm. but if we typed out the code, we wrote it down, yeah. you could fill the Grand Canyon with your DNA information 40 times. Mm -hmm. Wow. Put it another way, we typed out your DNA and we took that and we tried to get it to the moon. Would it reach the moon? I would say yes. Five million times it would. Yeah. Wow. That is a lot of organized information. It's too complex mm -hmm. to have happened all by itself. Just like the sunglasses you're wearing, you don't believe that those just happen. Mm -hmm. They evolved kind of a nose thing and then they got darker and then there's a sun. You go, that's not really logical. And I don't think it's logical to suggest that we happened all by ourselves. I think somebody made you. That's what I think. 
Mm -hmm. I think you're designed by your maker, a very intelligent, powerful being who's very moral because we see another set of constants in this universe, morality. I asked a young man earlier, would you be willing to tell me it's always wrong to beat up a small child? No. Yes. Why? Because uh, children, for the most part, are innocent. All right, but what if I said, I don't think they are. I like beating up small children. I think it's good to beat up small children. How can you tell me I'm wrong? Well, uh, by standards that have been set forth by religion for centuries, that is immoral. Well, that, that could be that religion has kind of written some of those things down, but if there is not a moral constant behind them, then it's just one set of people telling another people what to think. Yes. Right? Yes. So I think the moral constant in this universe is God himself. Mm -hmm. That's why we know that it is wrong to beat up small children, to punch somebody in the face. We know that's wrong, but the reason we even know about the concepts of right or wrong is because God is the standard of right and wrong. I got a lot of respect for this student here who is really given some critical thinking to what Todd Spiel is saying and is also letting Todd finish his argument before coming to a verdict about it. There's a lot of virtue in that, so a lot of respect for that student. I'm still thinking about when Todd was talking about how math, the stuff about math, and it got me thinking about the question, like, is math man-made? And like, part of me is saying, okay, well, yeah, the math or humans made numbers and the symbols and stuff. But then there's that tricky part, like he was saying, with the constants and the concepts. I'm very hesitant to say that's man-made because let's say there's like, let's say aliens exist and they're on another planet in a different universe. They're probably going to have, they're definitely going to have different numbers and symbols, but I'm convinced that they're still going to have the same concepts the Pythagorean theorem is still going to exist in a different galaxy. That how the triangle works, it's still going to be the same across it. And it just makes me wonder how we got these constants. It seems kind of unlikely for it to come from random chance. And so it makes me think those constants came from God. And then he also talked about irreducible complexity a lot. But from my understanding of it, his example with the human body being irreducibly complex isn't really accurate to what it's really saying it's a system that like take that there's a famous system it's the bacterial flagellum of e coli and the, it does a whole host of things but essentially you can't take any piece from it or else the whole thing would die and that's important because it shows that the whole system of it had to evolve at the same time or else it just died from natural selection because the added part that doesn't do anything it's going to be a hindrance to the creature it will get bred out as the generations go they had to all come into existence at once and that seems extremely unlikely for it to all happen at once if it's all just random chance and i think that's a decent case for an intelligent creator being behind the design of the bacterial flagellum of e coli and many other systems but take what i'm saying with a grain of salt because the idea of irreducible complexity, from my understanding, it's still highly debated. And sometimes Christians or other religious groups have proposed systems that they thought were irreducibly complex, but were disproven. The bacterial flagellum of E. coli not being one of them so far, but who knows? That could change in the future, so look out for that. But either way, I think this, the overarching point here was that Darwin's theory of evolution, it has holes in it. it. It holds up a good explanation for what it's laying down, but it's not like a comprehensive worldview. It can't, it doesn't have the answers for questions like, how did we get here before evolution? But what, what was the beginning of all these processes? That is something that Darwin said himself, like, he doesn't really know. And it's a really tough question that we're faced with. I don't think that we will ever be able to prove the answer is God or not, but I think the evidence points to God. So if you want to hear more arguments about God and everything we're talking about here, check out this video right there on screen. You can just watch it right there. Have a good day.